Thank you and good morning to a very exciting day. I think the most positive environmental protection day of the Monterey Bay Area has had in many, many years. So it's a trip to see each and every one of you here. My name is Bruce McPherson. I'm a Santa Cruz County Supervisor and Chairman of the Monterey Bay Community Power Policy Committee. Today, we launched the first Tri-County Community Choice Energy Agency and one of the largest in terms of geographic footprint, load and customers, Monterey Bay Community Power. I want to thank each and every one of you because I know there are so many have participated in this great, great region of ours. As a newly elected county supervisor five years ago, my office championed the formation of a Monterey Bay Community Power by approaching all 21 counties, three counties, and 18 cities in the Monterey Bay region, asking if they would join with Santa Cruz County to investigate, investigate community choice energy. We were going to do this in the four cities of Santa Cruz and the county, and I said, no, let's go the whole enchilada, so to be. And uh, our friend over in uh, Moss Landing would appreciate that terminology. <laughs> Nineteen of those partners worked with Santa Cruz County to form the largest joint powers agency formed in this region in over 40 years. It was a milestone of collaboration, mutual trust, and good government process, working together to provide our residents and businesses with 100% carbon-free electricity at reasonable rates, local control, and significant stimulus in our economic region. I call it a threefer. Environmental protection, econ economically viable, and local control of our agency. <laughs> For many years, forming Community Choice Energy Agency was the top greenhouse gas reduction initiative in all 21 of the climate action plans developed for the jurisdictions in this region. The launch of Monterey Bay Community Power represents the single biggest move our region can make to address climate change, short of everyone getting out of their cars. <laughs> the result will be that all of our city and county partners will meet their 2030 goals of Assembly Bill 32, greenhouse reduction within a year of today's launch, 11 years ago. Monterey Bay Community Power offers everyone in our region a choice, gives us local control over the type of energy we consume, and allows us to decide our own rates and complementary community programs, which will be in the future. We have a great group of speakers today. Each one of them will provide insight into the different aspects of Monterey Bay Community Power and into the cu customers we serve throughout our Tri-County region, and that's about 700 and 75,000 customers, I believe. First up, please join me in welcoming our region's representative from Washington, D.C. He's glad to be here, I know. Uh, Congressman Jimmy Panetta. I appreciate that, but uh, let's get one thing clear. I'm from here. Uh, I'm from Washington. I, I think there's... There's many of us in this room, many of, many of us who are behind this effort that understand that sentiment and feel that sentiment. And that is why uh, this is such a proud moment for all of us here. Uh, but it's a proud moment because of uh, the leadership of people, especially people like you, Bruce. Thank you very much for everything you've done. Look, not just, not just for today, but everything that you have done for the state of California, the central coast of California, uh, in a place that, as I said, is our home. So thank you very much. Let me also take this time to thank uh, the Monterey Bay Community Power Board members, Trina Kaufman Gomez, Carlos Palacios, uh, Steve McShane, uh, Jerry Munzer, I'm not sure is here yet. Oh, there you are. Hey, Jerry. Good to see you. Not good to see you. Yeah, you did. Good to see you. And then, of course, uh, MBAPS Kate Roberts. Uh, and to uh, the M uh, Monterey Bay Community Power CEO, Tom Habashi, and of course, all of you for being here. Um, looking around, 
uh, these chambers, I do believe that it's understandable that so many people came out on a Thursday, rainy uh, Thursday morning, uh, to not just celebrate, to uh, commemorate that uh, this is our first regional joint powers authority in this area in over 40 years. Uh, and I believe it's understandable because this is what we do here on the Central Coast. We value our environment here on the Central Coast. So yes, I am absolutely honored to be here. I am proud to be here because I believe that this is another example of our communities coming together to do what we do best, and that's protect our environment. Uh, we got a group here that's from different backgrounds, from different areas, and yes, even different political parties. <laughs> but you guys did something on a local level that our leaders on a national level are having a hard time doing. Despite your differences, you came together to get something done. But I can't stress enough, because when you come from the Central Coast, this is just what we do. Uh, our values and our passion to protect the environment. Uh, that's why, I mean, that's why, look, in our front yard, we have the largest national marine sanctuary in the continent of the United States. In our backyard, we have a national park in Pinnacles National Park. We have a national monument in Fort Ord National Monument. Monument. And now, that's why we have come together to take the steps necessary to continue to preserving our treasure chest of crown jewels, and that is why we now have the Monterey Bay Community Power Plant. As, as Bruce mentioned, this is a plan that lets people act on our local values, and it enables us to choose a clean, carbon-free source of energy. And yes, we do it with the help of PG&E, because they'll, they will continue to deliver the power by using their existing infrastructure. And look, what better place to have this type of plan than in California? California is number one in solar, it's number one in geothermal, number two in wind, just behind Texas. But as I tell my colleagues from that state, they got a lot of hot air there. <laughs> but I can tell you it's this local action that definitely translate, translates to other states and even other nations. Because as I said before, it's these types of small steps which help our larger fight against climate change. Uh, now more than ever, let me tell you, it's these types of steps that are gonna, be, gonna have to come from the ground up because what we've seen, the lack of effort coming from the top, from the top down. And so uh, that is why no doubt that is why that I am proud to be here. Uh, it is an absolute honor and I'm so proud to represent uh, this area that I call home. And yes, you bet, I am damn proud to support the Monterey Bay Community Power Plan because of the choices that they are giving us, giving us to live up to our values and the steps that they are taking for our environment, the future of this community and our country, and you bet, our values that we fight for every day right here on the Central Coast. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Congressman Panetta. Uh, next up, we have uh, Trina Kaufman Gomez. She is on the Monterey Bay Community Power Board and a council member of the city of Watsonville. Certainly a big deal here. Um, a bit nervous, so bear with me here. You know, this is a monumental day for our Tri-County region. We finally made it. This is a, it's a little little um, project that gets started, it gets rolled, we, we get a lot of um, momentum going with this, and uh, from the, the moment that this came to my council for the city of Watsonville, I was engaged in this process. Um, PDAC all the way through is uh, being a, a founding policy board member for the, the agency. We've been working on it since 2013, just that concept idea we talked about. Um, the sole purpose, of course, is to create the California's largest locally controlled community choice energy joint power authority to deliver the clean energy, carbon-free electricity to our consumers. To say that this is a huge achievement is just an understatement. We have many obstacles to overcome, 
to carry to get this goal to fruition and to deliver it to our vibrant and diverse community. There were nearly 100 meetings that were held, town hall presentations, discussions with industry leaders, city government representatives, organizations, community advocates. It took gaining a consensus and trust and to formulate a partnership that we now have with 19 government affiliates to agree on one common goal to make this happen. We needed to ensure this agency would be embraced with all within our vast region here, from south in San Ordo, to the hills of Hollister, to the north in the Big Basin. From our coastline, to our rural farmland communities, to, other, to our municipalities, to the agency, uh, this agency was a collaborative ever, uh, partnership that could not have been accomplished without the hundreds of man hours spent to shape our policy, goals, and objectives. Whether the customer is a large agricultural business, commercial industry, school or household, we've been transparent and inclusive so that we've addressed and met the unique needs of each of our partners so that we may achieve the goals of reducing our greenhouse gas emissions, lower costs to the consumers, and make an investment in our local community. Monterey Bay Community Power provides us with this unique opportunity to make positive contributions to our region's biggest industries, our agriculture, our tourism, and a community at large while focusing on redu the reduction of the carbon footprint for our future, future generation. So again, thank you all for being here. Really significant for this launch. I'm very impressed to be part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Now to address us is uh, Carlos Palacios. Uh, he is the Monterey, Can uh, Monterey Bay Community Power Policy Board uh, member. Um, or in the county administrative officer, and he really put the operations board together. Those are the executives of throughout the tri-county region. Carlos has been fantastic in getting that group together, and thank you very much, and he's a tremendous CAO for Santa Cruz County, too. Carlos. Uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, Supervisor McPherson. I want to start by thanking a couple people uh, in particular because often in today's world uh, it feels like an individual cannot make a difference, right? We feel subject to larger forces and sometimes you feel hopeless and helpless. But this is an example of somebody who's made a difference and there's a few people I wanted to point out just to start out and probably the key person in all of this, the one who got us in, I, uh, Bruce and I often tell her that she's the one who got us in this trouble and that's Jenny Johnson. Jenny's not here today, but we'll make sure she knows about uh, the words I spoke about her because uh, in the dark moments, uh, Bruce and I would often say, why did you do this to us? <laughs> but uh, the other one I wanted to acknowledge is Carol Johnson, who's out here too. These folks are the ones who do the work, you know, that did the work for years and uh, helped make this uh, come about. And so I am the county administrator for Santa Cruz County. And as many of you know, Santa Cruz County is an, has been an environmental leader uh, for many years. And when we set out to on this journey to create a joint powers authority, uh, we actually didn't know whether we were going to be successful or not. Uh, no one had done a tri-county effort. As uh, mentioned by Supervisor McPherson, at one point we thought we should just do it in Santa Cruz County. We had an agreement with our four cities and the county. Uh, we did a feasibility study and found that we could do it on our own. Uh, but Bruce insisted that we do it regionally, and, uh, and he was right. He was right, Bruce. Thank you so much. Uh, I also want to say a little bit about our agricultural community. I spent, uh, before I came to Santa Cruz County three years ago, uh, I spent two decades as a city manager in Watsonville. And so I got, had a good chance to work with the agricultural community there and get to know them very well. And so they are uh, very much part of uh, this effort. The Monterey Bay uh, area, including our three counties of Monterey, Santa Cruz, and San Benito, uh, have a rich agricultural history. 
Uh, local governments have always strived to work with our agriculture industry, and they're part of our regional identity. And in particular, we've worked with our ag community to protect ag land and to protect the ag the economy. Uh, whether we're growing apples or artichokes or strawberries, we have always recognized the value of our farmers. They are part of who we are, and not only do they put food on the table, they are one of the region's leading economic contributors. In my county, Santa Cruz alone, we produce crops with a production value of over $637 million in 2016, despite being located just over the hill from Silicon Valley. Monterey Bay Community Power will be an extension of our partnership with the ag community. We have spent time working with our largest customers. We have two staff that have been out there meeting every day with our local growers, and we understand the challenges they are facing right now, and there are many. When we developed this uh, JPA, we met with farm interests to explain the concepts and to see how we might help them. And so the bag community has always been interested in uh, preserving our environment and being responsible environmental stewards. They depend on the land and they do so uh, as, as do we. We think we can help them further that commitment to the land by taking them to the next level. We estimate that Monterey Bay Community Power will save hundreds of thousands of dollars to our local ag community in 2018 alone. That's money in their pocket and in the local economy. We will be partners in environmental stewardship, but also cost-effective partners who will assist them in their bottom line as well. 40% of the state's energy goes towards moving and cleaning water. 40% of all the energy let me say that again, 40% goes to moving and cleaning water. 80% of water in our state is used by the ag community. So it's a natural partnership to save energy, save costs for our ag community. We will be a model for the rest of California. They will look to us for leadership on energy issues. We will continue to partner with our farms in water efficiency projects so that they are less energy dependent. This will further reduce energy consumption and our carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. This is good news, particularly in a region that is so self-reliant on water. In the future, we also want to look into biomass, which is a form of renewable energy and a significant source of potential energy. What uh, used to go to the landfill will now be used to create energy. This is a win-win for everyone involved. The benefits of partnering with our ag community are many, and we look for their partnership in the future. Thank you very much. Next up to speak will be uh, Steve McShane, of, uh, a council member of the uh, city for the city of Salinas and vice chair of uh, Monterey Bay Community Power. But most importantly, he was a staff member when I was in the California Senate. And most, most importantly, he's a new daddy. Thank you so much, Bruce. Uh, the new son's name is Patrick Thomas McShane. Very excited. Uh, I want to thank the mayor of Monterey for hosting us. Clyde, Mayor Clyde, thank you for having us today. I'm so excited by all the partnerships. We have the Air Resources District. We have AMBAG, Energy Watch. But the most exciting thing is the energy in this room. I can say with confidence that the energy in this room is greater than the energy that we're turning on today. <laughs> At a meeting we recently had, I shared with some of my colleagues and with the audience that the best thing about Monterey Bay Community Power is the stakeholders. There are more folks that want to be involved in their energy choices than ever before. And to have that as a business is exciting. That's a resource that's immeasurable. And it's the reason why we're going to be so successfully, not just locally or regionally, but statewide. And that's the truth. Salinas represents the greatest number of residents in our service area and some huge energy users. Thanks to the likes of James and our great staff, we're already working on outreach to get big companies, big users to be thinking about where their power comes from. I want to speak about the hospitality industry in particular. We lead the state and the nation in so many ways. Organizations like the Pebble Beach Company already have such a green footprint. They have sustainability staff assigned to where things come from and where things go. Monterey Bay Community Power is only going to make that greater. Whether it's Leal in San Benito County, and they're excited, 
or Seascape in Santa Cruz County, or many of the resorts here along the Monterey Peninsula, our region's not just going to lead in power, but we will continue to lead in sustainability. So I'm excited to throw the switch today. I hope that you join me in that excitement and that we continue to grow what is already a huge, huge wave of change and leadership when it comes to environmental stewardship. Thank you. And now to uh, represent our third county uh, uh, partner from San Benito County. He's a, a member of the Monterey Bay Community Power Policy Board uh, Supervisor, uh, Jerry Munzer. Come on. On behalf of the uh, citizens of San Benito County and the Board of Supervisors, I want to thank everyone for allowing me to speak today. I also want to thank Supervisor McPherson he used to come to the AMBAG meeting what, a couple years ago and started talking about this. And I got excited and was able to go back to our board, got them on board, and we quickly passed the resolution to, to, um, to become part of this. And in doing so, I did not realize what a groundswell there was because they didn't bother to come to our, our board and talk to us. But there was a huge groundswell of citizens that got out there and worked very hard to help get this to this day. And I want to thank each and every one of them. <laughs> San Diego County was a leader. Our citizens were a leader in telling oil companies how we want oil extracted. I believe we were the first ones to pass an anti-fracking ordinance. They went and assisted Monterey in doing the same thing. And now we're going to the next step. We are going to be able to buy clean energy, sustainable energy, and in doing so, also provide jobs to create that energy here locally. All three of our counties, I believe, end up, I know San Diego County does, and then Santa Cruz County, we all have commuters that go to Silicon Valley. We need to create local jobs. This is going to help us do that, and we'll get commuters off our highway, which will, again, improve the air and, and decrease our uh, dependence on oil and everything else. Yeah, I just want to especially thank Bruce for coming with this idea, and thank you all for being here today. Now to give us a, a, maybe a, big, a broad perspective of the, the importance of uh, the economic implications for this, uh, Kate Roberts, President of Monterey Bay Economic Partnership. Please come on up. Bruce, and I just want to also give a shout out to Jenny Johnson who couldn't be here. I know that she was so um, important in being a catalyst for this whole effort. And um, I first met her and Bruce over lunch when I first joined MBEP two and a half years ago and was very excited at the opportunity and the idea of partnering with them to help bring this to the region. So it's been a great uh, couple, uh, two and a half years. I know a lot of hard work has gone into it. We have been uh, at MBEP uh, promoting this at our various events promoting with our board, who are the largest employers in the region. Um, MBEP covers the Tri-County area the same as uh, this organization. So I know, Bruce, it's easier to do it in a smaller <laughs> in a smaller space. But when you do reach out and have that depth of engagement across the whole Tri-County region, it really makes it so much more powerful. So very exciting to see this uh, model of regional engagement because we're not going to solve our problems that we face uh, in, in silos and all on our own. It really is going to take this regional type of effort. So we're excited to, to be part of this. Um, I just wanted to uh, touch on the environmental aspects, too, of this that have been mentioned already. But the importance of non-carbon based, um, and Supervisor Munzer was just mentioning this, uh, energy options, given the state of global warming and the impact in particular it's having on coastal communities, here with the beautiful coast that we have here in the Monterey Bay region, 
we need to really be thinking about solutions that will help do our part that we can in that way. Um, I don't know if any of you saw the New York Times article on Sunday uh, that was really interesting, uh, talking about this issue in depth, and especially uh, looking at uh, New Orleans today and 50 years out, and I'm sure somebody could do a similar map for our coastline. So what can we do here locally? What are the steps that we can take? This is a huge one. I'm so excited this is happening and that we're gonna flip the switch here in a minute. And the third point I wanted to make is that MBAP represents this region at the state level as stewards of the region. So me and I, I've, like there's, there's 15 other Kates around the state that do what, what I do in trying to help be a triple bottom line, what we call steward for our region, not only economic, but also environmental and equity. And one point that hasn't been touched on here is when you think about green and you know organic and all these things, you kind of think it's more of an elite offering and a special service you have to pay for. This is so cool because it is something that every single resident in our Tri-County area is going to be able to take advantage of. And that's something that MBEP really strives to do. And everything that we take on is, is considering that equity angle. So, uh, to say thank you for all of you for being here for supporting on the long long trek it's been to get here uh, Bruce for your leadership and uh, really excited to be part of it thank you all and last but not least uh, the one that's going to make this all work um, <laughs> he promised me that anyway <laughs> Uh, Tom Habashi is a very, very special person. He is recognized as the guru of you know, uh, just non-carbon energy sources and how to have clean energy. We, um, we stole him and I just met with the chief executive officer from Silicon Valley, but we are getting together with Silicon Valley and some issues too that Tom might mention. So uh, thank God he moved to Pacific Grove. <laughs> so uh, we can steal it. It's been a real pleasure, and now we have our offices open in uh, Garden Court over by the, uh, the airport, and staff is being hired. But we have a tremendous uh, gem in Tom Babashi, and he's going to uh, give you some ideas of how this is really going to work on the ground. But Tom, it's a great honor to have you with us. It's been tremendous to work with you, and uh, the Monterey Bay Community Power is going to be the best agency of its type in the state of California and the United States of America. So please. Well, thanks a lot, Bruce. I appreciate it. Heck of a tall order. You just. Uh... I want to thank you all for, for being here. This is. I've been waiting for this day now for about six months. That was my first day uh, on the job on September 1st. And uh, it's really interesting for the first three months when uh, I would call people to try to set things up, uh, whether it's bankers or whatnot, they ask me what's the business address, and I give them my home address. <laughs> More often than not. <laughs> um, it's been a, a great fun for me for the last six months, and even for the last year and a half, because I did spend a little time with Silicon Valley Clean Energy before I came here. I, I, want, I, I want to acknowledge, first, that I want to thank you all for being here, and I, and I do want to acknowledge a lot of people that had something to do with the formation and eventually um, get us to the point that we are at, which I believe is, is um, we are going to be on, a, on the road to success um, in the future, and we're going to be an asset for, for all the three counties eventually. Um, but I do want to acknowledge first uh, uh, Beth Vaughn, and she's here. She's the executive director for Cal CCA. She, she, I would say, the, the hardest working executive director that I've, um, I've had the pleasure of meeting. She represents us, uh, all of CCAs in, in California uh, on the legislative and regulatory front. I'm really glad that she took some time to, to come and join us today. Um, I also want to acknowledge all my friends from Silicon Valley Clean Energy. Uh, I've known Gurish, who's the CEO now for, uh, for Silicon Valley Clean Energy for over 25, 30 years maybe, and all the wonderful staff that uh, came in today. I appreciate you guys coming in, um, and, and I know they are wonderful people because I hired them all.
Uh, my friend for quite some time now that I would like to everybody to know uh, is uh, Sean Marshall from Lean Energy. She is the one that started not just this uh, with the help, um, not just this agency, uh, but just about every uh, CCA out there, starting with Marin, working her way through every one that got created. She had a hand and uh, and putting it together and. Um, to a large extent, she's responsible for bringing me over to uh, Monterey Bay. Um, I want to thank you, Sean. There are many vendors and many, a lot of people that uh, we've worked with for the last six months, most of whom are not in it just because they, they, they want to make a buck. Most of, most of them believe in the model, believe in community choice. And uh, they're wonderful people to work with, and I've worked with them now on more than one occasion. I'm going to mention them here quickly. Uh, of course, Lean Energy, uh, Pacific Energy Advisors, none of them are here today because they're out doing their work. Um, they're great to work with. They've been handling all the power supply work for our, on our behalf. Uh, Great X, who is going to be handling all the data management for us. Um, of course, um, uh, Bill uh, Maxfield. Uh, what a wonderful person to work with, and he's been doing all the marketing and communication work on our behalf for quite some time. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> I, I would definitely be remiss if I, if I didn't mention the names of all the people that I worked with at, um, at uh, Santa Cruz uh, County. Uh, they did a lot of work before I showed up. They were the ones that were handling all the work. They were. They put their money on the line, they put uh, their, their time on the line. And um, so David Carlson, Peter Ditlev, um, and Laurel Garza, she's not here with us. Carol Johnson, I, I can't say enough about you. She was an absolutely wonderful person to work with, and she, she was pretty much in charge of the whole thing all the way until the day I showed up. And with such grace, she handed me the, the baton and moved on. <laughs> Uh, Dana also, and I don't see her today, Dana was our legal counsel for quite some time and she was the last one to leave them, uh, to leave us to get back to her job. A uh, uh, wonderful person to work with. And of course the one that everybody mentioned already, uh, Jenny Johnson, uh, what, a, what a terrific lady uh, to work with. I want to thank them all and um, last but not, not, certainly not least uh, is um, the staff that we have at uh, Silicon Valley Clean Energy. They all came in uh, in December and January, so they've only been around for a couple of months, yet um, it feels like they, they've been here for, for, um, for about a year, maybe even two <laughs> years. Uh, they there before I show up in the morning, they're there when I leave at night, and I can't beat them to it. No matter how early I try to show up, there's somebody in there ready, and they always stay in as late as, as need to. Uh, what a wonderful group that I have, and, and I'm going to mention them here by, by first name and, and, um, and uh, fairly quickly. Uh, i got Tiffany, who's in charge of um, all of the administrative services, Bren, the best executive assistant that, I, that money could buy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, of course, I get uh, Mark Buckman, um, one of the early ones to, to show up on the scene. Mark Adado, I couldn't hope for a better person to do the community relations. Uh, and uh, of course, the was the best dynamic team, Peter and uh, Shelley. Uh, they are the ones that put this thing together and they're responsible for all the communication and, and outreach. Um, and uh, of course I got Cynthia who's not with us, she takes care of the HR work. And uh, James Mark, yeah, I, he's out there, he's our, uh, he's our ag guy and he's in touch and, and, and having a solid relationship with just about everybody um, uh, in that group. And um, he's keeping them all in the fold so to speak, so I'm pretty happy to have him on our staff. Um, and I think the last addition that we have is uh, our legal counsel. I'm pretty happy to have her uh, join us, uh, Angela. Um, and, oh, oh, yeah, Beth, yes, of course, yes, yes. The, uh, Beth uh, Twinkard, she's with us and she's going to be working um, eventually with a lot of people from the community on forming an advisory, uh, advisory council. I hope I didn't forget anybody. I know Mary, of course, I'm sorry Mary. She's the last one to join us just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, what a wonderful staff to work with and they really carry, them, uh, carry the weight. 
uh, all of it now, but for, for the most part, I just spend a little time trying to make Bruce and, and Renee happy with, <laughs> <laughs> with the work that we are doing. So, so once again, thank you all for, for coming in. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate that you join us in the celebration. And I'm going to ask Peter to um, come in now and uh, help me figure out how to turn this <laughs> switch on. We chose this rechargeable solar-powered lantern to represent our first day of service because it symbolizes Monterey Bay Community Power's commitment to carbon-free, to clean carbon-free energy. It also represents California's adventurous, trailblazing spirit, um, and that is the spirit that is driving the community choice energy movement right now. Um, I'm happy to say that the symbolic gesture in this lantern won't end today either. Uh, it will live on as part of an annual award. Um, the Bright Light Award will honor the employee who embodies these qualities, integrity, ingenuity, and having fun in the workplace. The type of employee who's really a bright light for the rest of us. This year, the vote was unanimous. We're gonna be passing the Bright Light Award on to a man who has started not one, but two community choice energy agencies. A man who instills integrity, ingenuity, and fun in all of us. Our fearless leader, our CEO, Tom Habashi.